All right, so here we go. So yes, finally, it appears to be happening for Cyberpunk. Check out the headline right here. This is it. The moment we've been waiting for Cyberpunk's No Man's Sky revival is happening in 2023. We have a lot to talk about regarding the expansion and update 1.7, including this right here that yes, Cyberpunk expansion adding more than you think. Night City appears to be getting more beyond Pacifica and we're talking about, yes, Phantom Liberty. We're going to go to some leaks which indicate that we're going to be getting more beyond just Pacifica, just the combat zone that is going to be fleshing out more of Night City than we thought. So this is really, really cool. Also, we're going to be talking about this one right here as well. Will Cyberpunk finally expand its romance options and how they should mirror Mass Effect to make and happy and an interesting read that we're going to be diving into in just a moment as well plus the witcher 3 versus cyberpunk the final showdown the cd project red fandom finally weighs in on the ultimate open world rpg fight who wins but yeah take a look at this right here all right so we're back at my fancy penthouse here so let's see what's going on with my champions nice yes it looks like we've won many battles and are leveling up and upgrading beautiful and what's this a new champion, Rhonda, has been added to the roster. So yes, what you are seeing here is Raid Shadow Legends, the glorious epic MMORPG on both PC and mobile. And guess what? It's free and you can download it right now. Now, what impressed me so much about Raid is the sheer scope and size of this game. With over 650 completely unique champions to upgrade, take on challenging dungeon bosses, and fight against other players in the PvP arena. So join me right now in Raid Shadow Legends. Use my QR code on the screen or links below in the description to download Raid for free to your mobile phone or PC. But what's going on with our new champion, Rhonda? Yes, if you guessed it, she's based on the MMA legend, Rhonda Rousey. And let's just say our new champion, Rhonda, has been through a lot, training hard alongside her seven brothers to become what she is today, an unstoppable force. She became the talk of her town, taking on four knights at once with her bare hands, she eventually fought her way to the top, becoming known as the queen of the arena. Remember, she did all of this with her bare fists too. You can get Rhonda for free right now, whether you're a new or long time player, just by logging into Raid right now. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and February 28th, and Rhonda is yours. That's all there is to it. To celebrate Rhonda's arrival, by the way, you can also use the special promo code Raid Rhonda to get a bunch of helpful stuff like a three day 100% XP boost, 500,000 silver, and five full energy refills. Perfect for leveling up your Rhonda, so she's at the top of her game. Just enter the promo code Raid Rhonda in game, and all these goodies can be yours. And Raid has also prepared something very special for all new players this Christmas. Join me and celebrate 12 days of Raid. Download Raid Shadow Legends from the links below, copy your player ID from in game, and then go to 12 days of raid.polarium.com and enter your player ID and then join me on a fun festive adventure that lasts 12 days running from December 19th to January 10th. Every day is a new experience of this wintry story and check out a new mini game for a chance to win some amazing in-game and real life prizes including holiday themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And existing raid players don't think you've been forgotten be sure to head to 12daysofraid.plarium.com where you can find a special holiday promo code that everyone can use for a small festive gift. So join me right now in Raid Shadow Legends. New players, remember, if you use my link or scan the QR code right here on the screen, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free Champion Virgis, and also this cool in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. And don't forget, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now as well. Check it out in the description below. I hope to see you in the arena soon. So yeah, back to the Cyberpunk news. A lot of you guys are wondering, hey, Robbie, what's going on with update 1.7? Any movement from CD Projekt Red on this one? So yeah, take a look at this right here. Uh, we have internal updates going on, especially with quality assurance right here only five days ago. They have been busy testing something, something. And then, of course, seven days ago, we had Dev5 internal update from CD Projekt Red. This is telling me that they are intensifying their testing for whatever it is they're working on, which is most likely, of course, update 1.7. So I think we're getting closer 
and closer to the release of update 1.7, which is going to be the next big free update. I cannot wait for that one. Now, with update 1.7, we may see something very big happen for Cyberpunk 2077, something that we've only seen for games like, hey, No Man's Sky. Take a look at this right here. This was discovered by a Reddit user who is named, of course, heading to sound. He says the game is only 1% away from reaching very positive overall reviews. And of course, recent reviews are very positive with about 12K reviews. But when we get to very positive with nearly half a million reviews, it goes to show that Cyberpunk is basically doing the impossible and reaching essentially a huge portion of the cyberpunk audience to say hey i'm actually really loving this game now despite the rough launch it's not just based on those recent newcomers that have come into the game since edge runners or what have you this is very very big for cyberpunk considering also that phantom liberty is around the corner but yeah i cannot wait to see what happens with update 1.7 and phantom liberty and see if this goes into that like extremely positive rating also we have this thread right here check it out it says i'm incredibly excited about the expansion plus update 1.7 and i feel like the whole community is feeling this it says the game is already incredible with 1.6 played it for the first time two months ago but after having read the expansion leak and the developer comments for update 1.7 i'm super excited about the game's future we're going to get into the leak in just a moment the combat zone, new police system, vehicle combat, new ending, new cyberware and perks, new melee combat loop, on top of all the content coming with Phantom Liberty will transform the game as we know and cement a positive legacy. I know that many of these things were supposed to be at launch, but at least we're finally uh, be able to experience a game as it was envisioned to be. Yeah, as long as we get to that point, you know, I'm sure that there are still some things that you guys would love to see, live fleshed out live paths, which I don't think that's gonna happen. But hey, I cannot wait to see this new spy thriller gameplay loop from the expansion. So that to me excites me big time. Also, yeah, something interesting is happening for Cyberpunk. Could win a game of the year award in time for its game of the year edition, which should be out in 2023. Better late than never. And this comes from Steam Labor of Love Award, which I think they should win no matter what, because they have poured their, uh, you know, hearts and soul into restoring Cyberpunk to what it is now after all the updates. But yeah, we need to talk about those updates, particularly, of course, Expansion uh, Pack 1. I always called Expansion Pack 1. I wish there was an Expansion Pack 2, but also known as Phantom Liberty. I cannot wait for this. We have a leak about what we can expect from the Phantom Liberty expansion going beyond the new combat zone, which will be included in the new expansion. But yeah, what's gonna be happening with Night City as a whole? What about dialogue options? What about endings and that sort of thing? So remember, this is a leak, but this leak, a lot of this stuff have actually come true with this leak, and that's one of the reasons why I'm reporting on it. So it goes on to say this right here, the action is set to take place in the combat zone in the southwestern part of Pacifica District, We'll also visit the stadium, which we did not have access to before. Of course, we know that. Johnny Silverhand will most likely not receive much new dialogue and will often be drowned out by a character named Songbird. We've seen some teases to her character, and we have also seen that, yes, of course, Johnny Silverhand will be making an appearance in Phantom Liberty, as well as, you better believe it, Solomon Reed, played by Idris Elba. Cannot wait to see what he does with this character. Also, the expansion will supposedly also change some dialogues from the end of the base game. This could actually end up being a good thing or a bad thing, uh, dependent on how you guys receive this. I'm curious to see what endings are going to actually kind of like alter and what dialogue options will be altered uh, with this. But apparently, according to this leak and rumor, we will be getting a brand new ending, which should appease to you guys and what you guys have been asking for, it seems. We'll see if that actually pans out to be true. Then apart from the or aforementioned main missions, excuse me, the expansion will enrich the world of cyberpunk with new side quests and contracts. This for me is huge. I feel like Night City is kind of underwhelming in the things that you can actually do around the city. And in fact, I really, really hope we get some more social 
type interactions that you can go to bars and go to restaurants with friends and like clubs and things like that and experience the nightlife of Night City. That would be really, really cool to see. There's no mention of that in the leak, but you never know. But what is cool here is that, yes, it appears that we will be getting more side content, random encounters, that sort of thing throughout the entirety of Night City beyond Pacifica, which I think is super important to really solidify this as a, you know, worthwhile open world RPG for many people in their library of games. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about romance options in Cyberpunk. Yes, I kid you not, this is a thread going on right now within the community by far the most talked about thing. Check it out right here. Give me the option to romance Arasaka Tower, you cowards. I kid you not. I'm like, what in the world is this? It's absolutely made me laugh so much. And then we have this one. It says, give us the option to romance buildings. Damn it. This is a follow-up from Key 4427 And it shows, of course, Arasaka Tower. And then, yes, Mega Building H10. And it says, I want to romance the Arasaka Building. Same, but the H10 gives me tomboy vibes. <laughs> I guess I could see that. But yeah, Cyberpunk community is weird and i i love it you know i personally love it. it made me laugh so much but let's get into the serious discussion okay about romance options in cyberpunk 2077 and also talking about cyberpunk orion also known as cyberpunk 2078 yeah that's gonna be the sequel i cannot wait for it so here is this article right here it says cyberpunk sequel should learn should lean excuse me into being more mass effect with its relationships and i totally agree with this uh so check it out right here it says cyberpunk was lambasted for its lack of choices when it came to the main storyline and though it branches into many different endings life paths like no man street kid and corpo ultimately met nothing similarly the game had a very very restrictive view of romantic relationship options based on your gender and preference of course we had mal v's could romance panem and carrie and then female fees could romance Judy or River. And guess what? That was basically it. That was very, very limiting. Also, we have this one right here. It says, but clearly this one part of cyberpunk that really resonated with fans, V's relationship with Pan Am, Judy, River, or Carrie, especially those first two, were some of the most compelling parts of the game. If not the most compelling, I think fans wanted more. That's why I'm citing Mass Effect here in a game that started out with fairly restrictive romance options for Shepard when it debuted, but by the end, there were barely any humans or aliens that were not romanceable in that game, which is how my Shepard eventually ended up with Pally, who was not romanceable when you first meet her. That changed over time. So again, it would be cool to see an update to this, and I'm kind of curious about something. I want to ask you all something here. Would you like to see like a cyberpunk spinoff game that is centered specifically around romance? Kind of like, I guess you would say The Sims, but built in the cyberpunk universe. Because it seems to be something that you guys love so much. Or do you think it should always be kept in, of course, cyberpunk 2077, the game? Uh, sound off. I'm kind of curious about this one. Now, also, we have this right here. I don't expect cyberpunk 2078 to continue the story. Given the events of the first game, but it's possible these characters could recur. Among the list of characters I see as people that Cyberpunk fans wish to ro be romanceable, we have the following. Of course, it's a pretty big list. You got to remember Johnny Silverhand is on that list. Jackie and Misty, Vince, Takamura, Meredith Stout, Rogue, Mako, Hanako, Placid, Claire, and Saul. And yeah, I'm sure there's a couple of others that you guys would like to see romanceable on that list let me know if there's any that are missing of course or if one just is at the absolute top of your request list and maybe just maybe cd project red can make it happen furthermore it goes on to say this and this is interesting it says you get the idea more than one option per gender and preference at the very least expanding on the part of the game that worked the best hell i'd even just take better relationships with characters period that for me really really piqued my interest because again gta 4 really excelled at showcasing friendship it doesn't have to necessarily be romantic maybe your buddy and you want to go out in on the town or what have you and go to a bar and just like enjoy life go you know golfing or whatever uh that would be a really really cool type of experience 
in Night City for sure. I'm kind of curious what mini games they could have in Night City, uh, you know, that could really showcase the future, I guess you would say. It's kind of underwhelming in that way. I mean, uh, of course, we do have brain dancing. Could you go out and experience types of brain dances with a friend? That would be so, so cool. All right, so finally, it goes on to say this right here. Even if I didn't romance Panem as female B, her friendship was one of the best parts of that playthrough, and I think more characters deserve that level of exploration. So more companionship is something that I see that a lot of you guys want from Cyberpunk and, of course, its sequel. So maybe that'll happen, and I know that the program behind that can be a bit difficult, but yeah, there's been games that have done a great job with companionship for sure, as long as they're not like overly talkative and annoying that's one thing that i think a lot of people like about elden ring is that you do get you know that break from that yeah it has to be balanced all right so let's go ahead and talk about your top comments from my most previous cyberpunk video which was this one right here cyberpunk this is excellent news for the cyberpunk sequel the witcher 3 versus cyberpunk 2077 we're going to focus up around that discussion about which one is better in your mind, Witcher 3 or Cyberpunk, so we have your opinions finally, so let's get into them. Dan goes on to say this right here. Personally, I like Cyberpunk a lot more. It's mostly to do with the setting, the incredible density and layers to the city. I find the gameplay far more enjoyable, be it the satisfying combat, the layout of each mission, and numerous ways in which you can approach them. The traversal is also a lot of fun, whether it's taking in sights and exploring on foot. I have never used fast travel. Whoa, that's huge. Nice. It says double jumping to hidden areas or weaving in and out of traffic in first person when on a motorbike. That's always fun. The Witcher has the edge when it comes to the game's pacing. The main quest in Cyberpunk is far too short. 100% agree with this. I wonder how much was left on the cutting room floor, whereas The Witcher really does feel like an epic journey. Ultimately, there are very different games and which one comes out on top will depend on how many boxes each game ticks for each player. For me, ultimately, which game comes out on top depends on update 1.7 and the expansion. When all said is done with Cyberpunk, we'll see how it stacks up against The Witcher because right now there are features, of course, in Cyberpunk which cannot compete against The Witcher like, you know, I guess you would say the police system. Uh, you know, it's not a police system in The Witcher, but it is far more robust. The AI is just better in that regard. Also, we have Lost in Game says this. I want a cyberpunk game where you aren't being forced to only use motorcycles or photo mode or the mirror or the ripper docks to see your character. And if you're joining a faction, there should be gigs and side gigs that further the faction you joined, like with the avocados. You know what? You nailed it on the head right there. That's a big issue for me with Cyberpunk is how underwhelming that part of the game is. The factions are just kind of like there on certain main missions and not there at all in the presence of the city. You don't feel their presence as much as I thought you would at all. So I really, really wish that one thing in particular, like faction wars and siding with faction, faction rewards, those things would change the game so much in the long term, I think. Furthermore, we have Omar who says this, even though I really like Cyberpunk from Star and saw something creative and beautiful underneath those bugs, the game and the game is, excuse me, and will probably never be even near The Witcher 3. I'm replaying it now and I'm amazed how much attention and little silly details are in game. The amount of dedication and love people put into this game is astonishing. I hope uh, that CD Projekt, excuse me, Cyberpunk 2077 will come near that with the expansion phantom liberty at least we can hope it does if things don't go wrong and that's a thing that is one thing you have to remember things have gone wrong in the past with cyberpunk Ooh, let's hope that does not happen here uh with phantom liberty 2023 is gonna be interesting but let me tell you what this is cd project red's chance this is the big moment we've been waiting for that yes this could be the absolute revival the comeback for cyberpunk 2077 with that final big free update in the form of update 1.7 and of course phantom liberty and then ultimately you're going to have this game of the year edition it might not be called game of the year edition but it's going to be this definitive edition for cyberpunk which i think cd project red is just hoping crossing their fingers that this puts it on the map finally as one of the best open world rpg experiences out there yeah there it is 
Uh, more updates about Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, can't wait for 2023. Really looking forward to it. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Cyberpunk and open world gaming goodness. And I will see you all next time. Take care.